at this point, before we go into the lecture, it's really good to perhaps consider what Paul was going through, yet he was still able to say these words, rejoice. I mean, could you be going through such situations and still say rejoice? Well, Paul in chapter 1 verse 18 asked them to rejoice. In chapter 2 verse 18, he says the same thing. He's, he's so happy that Christ is being preached, whatever the case may be. In chapter 3 verse 1, he tells them to rejoice again. Perhaps because he's, he said to the Philippian church, it's no problem for him to repeat himself. And in chapter 4, he says, rejoice, and I say it again, rejoice, let your gentleness be evident to all. Now, Paul was in prison when he was saying this. So therefore, we can ask ourselves a question and say, well, when should we rejoice? Well, we should rejoice always. Irrelevant of what we are going through, we can still find joy in the Lord. Remember that time when David was in Ziklag? The, the Amalekites, I believe, had taken away his wives and all their cattle and the wives of his men. And, they, you know, they were all thinking about stoning David to death. But the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Well, how did he encourage himself in the Lord? We're going to look at those ways as a means for us also to be able to rejoice in difficult situations. So we can rejoice always, and we can rejoice at all times. To rejoice does not necessarily mean that you are proving that what's happening to you that may be difficult is all coming from God, and so, you know, you gotta make sure that you rejoice because God won't be happy with you. That's not the point. The point is you have gotta be able to find joy in the Lord. In Psalm 103, the Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and let all that is within me bless his holy name. It says, bless the Lord again, O my soul. It's commanding his soul to bless the Lord. It's commanding his soul to rejoice. It's commanding himself to remember all the good things that God has done for him and begin to rejoice. When you think about the things that God has done for you in your difficult time, it's probably easier to rejoice then than to be mournful. So, when should we rejoice? Always at all times. How do we rejoice? Well, I believe our rejoicing has to come from the commitment we already have established with God. If we're not established or committed to God, it's going to be very difficult to rejoice. So when we say how do we rejoice, it's not so much about the words you use and the, the posture you assume, but it's more about where does that re sense of rejoicing originate from? That sense of rejoicing can only originate from your commitment to God first, and secondly, your commitment to others. Paul was so committed to the church. I mean, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, thereabouts, he began to talk about his sufferings, and he says, besides all this, I, fa I face the daily pressure of my commitment or my thoughts towards the churches. You know, that's why he could go through the trouble because he was thinking about his commitment to the church. He's the apostle to the Gentiles. He's committed to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone else the administration of this mystery which for ages past was kept in the God who created all things. So he's so committed to preaching the gospel that he will go through any problem and still be able to rejoice and also your commitment to your calling because you have a calling there's a call that god has upon you you know in ephesians chapter 4 paul says as a prisoner for the lord then I ask you uh, to live a life worthy of the calling you have received well there's a general calling i know that but there's a specific calling the bible says to us in hebrews chapter 12 it says let us run the race marked out for us there's a general race that we've got to run, but there's also a, a, a specific race that each one of us is running. The Bible tells us again in the book of Philippians chapter 2, it says, uh, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is he who is at work in you. For God is the one at work in you, both to will and to act according to his good purpose. So there is a general purpose that God is working on, but there is also 
a specific purpose that God is calling you to work on. So when you're committed to that purpose, you can have the attitude of rejoicing in difficult times. And to rejoice, like I said earlier on, really means find your strength in God. Find your commitment to God to let the commitment you have to God inspire you to make, to have the right attitude towards a situation. And that attitude would be, my God will deliver me, is able to deliver me, like the three Hebrew boys had in the book of Daniel. So the final uh, area in this particular lecture is the questions we can ask ourselves. We can say, you know, do you encourage others in times of trouble? And what changes do you need to make? Let's consider this topic of rejoicing as one that is absolutely crucial to enable us to enter into all that God has for us because of the way that we respond to situations around us. Uh, James says, count it all joy when you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance and perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature, complete, and lacking nothing. So I'll see you in the next lecture.